Good evening, Revelation. Are you guys ready to worship with us tonight? Come on and put your hands together in this place. Your healing is in this room tonight. Your blessings are in this room tonight. Let me hear you shout power. Shout power. Say glory. Say blessings. He's in this room.
holy, 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 holy is the Lord God Almighty. So let's bring heaven down and be in tune with heaven. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Yes.
receive it for you, for your life. Sing it loud.
been faithful? Has he been a covering of provision? Is he your healing? Take it, take it, take it, take it. Take it right now. Take it right now. It's yours, it's yours, it's yours, it's yours. Take it right now. Anybody come into this room with any needs tonight? We trust in you, God. We trust in you, God. We know that you will never leave us. You will never leave us. You will never leave us. He will never leave you. I said, do you know that he will never leave you? He could never fail you. He's too good of a father to leave you where you are. God is changing things right now in the name of Jesus. He's too good. He's too good.
this room with, but you got to know that he will never leave you. He is always going to make a way. Sometimes you just got to stop trying to figure it out for yourself and let God make a way for you. God will give you control over every situation in our life. We know that you will never leave. Come on, sing that out.
jealous for me. He loves like a hurricane. Loves like a hurricane. I am a tree bending beneath the weight of his wind and mercy. When all of a sudden, when all of a sudden, I am unaware of these afflictions eclipsed by glory. And I realize just how beautiful you are and how great your affections are for me. We sing, oh, how he loves us. And oh, how he loves us all. Oh, how he loves us. How he loves us.
thank you that we have access to never-ending life in you. Thank you that we overcome the world in you. for yourself and knowing that yourself that his love is never ending for you for you for you for you for you personally it doesn't matter what happened it doesn't matter what you did he loves me oh how he loves me oh how he loves me oh Say thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Yeah. Hallelujah. Jesus. Father, we're grateful. We're grateful to be in this house, Revelation Church, God, where we see signs and wonders, where you are, Lord, where your presence resides, God. We worship you, Father. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, God. My heart could tell a story If my life would sing a song 
If I have a testimony If I have anything at all No one ever cared for me like Jesus His faithful hand has held me on this way And when I'm old and gray All my days and love it on the earth Let it be known In you alone My joy was found Still 
Father, we give you praise this evening. We thank you for your presence. We thank you for your spirit. Father, we thank you right now in the name of Jesus. Explode in this place. Let your fire fall. Let your glory be released. Father, we thank you this evening. Let it rain. Let it rain miracles. Let it rain breakthroughs. Bring this house to the next place that you've called them to be. Father, we thank you for your servant tonight, Prophet Lovick. We thank you tonight, amen, for Prophetess Maggie. Father, we thank you for the great staff of this church. We pray tonight in the name of Jesus. May this be a night to remember. Speak to us tonight. Shift us tonight. Move us forward tonight. We give you praise for it. In Jesus' name. Come on, somebody give God a great, great praise tonight. Hallelujah. Let it rain. Oh, bye bye, shut up. Hallelujah. Amen. Well, we are excited to be with you tonight. Amen. We are excited to be, amen, at one of the greatest churches in the West Coast, in the state Hallelujah. of California. Amen. Amen. You're not clapping like you believe that this is one of the greatest churches in the amen. West Coast. Hallelujah. Amen. We are excited tonight. Amen. It's pretty interesting that last time when I was here and just witnessing the power of God and the glory of God. Amen. The Lord began to speak to me then. And uh, I just quietly, you know, just took in the things that God was revealing to me. Amen. And then the servant of the Lord reached out to me several days ago. I woke up late as usual because of our 2 a.m. prayer. And um, I get up and there's a message there. Apostle, can you come? Can you come to Revelation Church? And I knew that God was ready to release what he revealed to me last week. Amen. 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 Can we give God some praise tonight? Before you have your seat, before you have your seat, amen, I just want to honor, number one, amen, the presence of such an amazing staff in this church. Amen. amen. I want you to appreciate that. One of the things that I often say to our staff back in Brooklyn, New York, uh, usually when you walk into a building, you don't, you don't notice the pillars. You might notice the floor, you might notice the, the walls, you might notice the people, but you don't notice the pillars. You don't normally come in and say, wow, those are really nice pillars. <laughs> Amen? Hallelujah. But how many understand it's the pillars that hold everything together? Amen. Amen. Come on, clap one more time for the staff of this great church. Amen. Hallelujah. Folks, while you're clapping, I, I, I want to go quickly. Amen. Because there's so many people here. Amen. But I just want to, I'm going to limit it. Amen. First and foremost, I want to acknowledge the presence of my family being with me tonight. Everyone already knows double grace, right? Amen. Well, most of you don't know Double Grace's big sister. Amen. When I say big sister, I mean big sister. Amen. And that's none other than Prophetess Destiny Lancaster. Amen. I want to acknowledge, I want to acknowledge her husband. Amen. One of my main armor bearers, armor bearer. Isn't it interesting that you get saved, become an armor bearer, then God gives you my oldest daughter. I, I think that's a good, you know, thing. Amen. But let me tell you this. I don't know if you guys have ever, ever heard of, of drill music, but my, my son-in-law, uh, the Lord gave him this, this, first of all, he came into the kingdom of God, not rapping, not doing anything, but God began to uh, speak to us. And as he began to speak to us, it began to unlock some things in him. Let me tell you this. This guy is a dangerous, dangerous drill rapper. Amen. Amen hallelujah he's come up he's come up with what we call drill worship drill worship and that's none other than my son-in-law bobby born king right there amen hallelujah now listen my other family that's here is too many of them it's too many of them amen so first of all 
I want to acknowledge, first of all, amen, most of you guys probably did not know this. How many of you know Coach AP? How many of you know Coach AP? Did y'all know that that's my youngest brother? Can we give it up for Coach AP? Can we give it up for Dangerous Diva, his wife? Amen. Her sisters are there. Her mother is there. Her father is there. Amen. Next to them, amen, I see one of my spiritual daughters that's been connected to me for years. When I say for years, I mean for years. There's so much I can say about this woman of God. Amen. Let's clap for Apostle Donna Spivey. Wave your hands, Spivey. Amen. Hallelujah. Now listen, uh, all my other nieces and nephews, just quickly raise your hand because I can't shout all of you guys out. Jay Funk. Amen. Josiah. Love all of you guys. Amen. Now listen, before... I go to not the last one because there's somebody that we're saving for last. Amen. There's somebody that's been walking with me for, let me think now, let me compute it properly, 38 years. 38 years. Apostle, we've been married out of those 38 years going on 33 years. And, and, and that's none other that's none other than the finest woman in the building. My wife, Prophetess Makita Morton, a powerful woman of God. Amen. Now listen, if there's anyone, anyone that's not standing up for what we are about to do, amen, I'm a nice guy, but I want to say shame on you. Because I want you to appreciate, hear me today, and this is in my own estimation. I'm going to tell you this later on while I start ministering. Amen. But I want you to appreciate one of the greatest prophets this side of heaven. And that's none other than Prophet Lovi Elias. Hallelujah. That's not enough noise. That's not enough noise. While you're praising God for him, praise God for his wife, Prophet Matthew Elias. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Well, God is good. God is good when? And all the time. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. You can be seated in the presence of the Lord. How many of you are ready to hear from God tonight? Yeah. Amen. I'm going to start off, and people that know me, when I tell them I'm going to start off slow, they know it's dangerous tonight. I'm going to start off slow because there are some things I want to make sure that I communicate to you tonight by the Spirit of God, and I'm going to be coming from 2 Samuel, 2 Samuel chapter number five second samuel chapter number five and we're going to be looking at the first few verses of second samuel chapter number five second samuel chapter number five <laughs> starting at verse number one it says, then came all the tribes of Israel to David unto Hebron. And they spake, saying, behold, we are your bone and your flesh. Also in time past, when Saul was king over us, you were the one that led us out and brought us in in Israel. And the Lord said to you that you shall feed my people Israel, and you shall be a captain over Israel. So all the elders of Israel came to the king to Hebron. And King David made a league, a covenant, with them in Hebron before the Lord. And they anointed David king over Israel. David was 30 years old when he began to reign. And he reigned for 40 years in Hebron. He reigned over Judah for seven years and six months. And in Jerusalem, he reigned 
30 in three years over all Israel and Judah. I want to read to you again verse number four and five. David was 30 years old when he began to reign. He reigned for 40 years, seven and a half over Hebron and 33, 32 actually and a half over all of Israel. I want to talk to you tonight. That's all that I needed. I'm down now. I want to talk to you tonight from the subject, the kingly anointing. Amen. The kingly anointing. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The kingly anointing. Now, just grab my Bible because I know so many people are watching and I don't want people to think that I'm preaching without scriptures. But how many you understand when you are a living epistle? Amen. <laughs> God's intention was not for his words to be in a book. Teaching good. Amen. His intention was for you and I to be a living epistle. Amen. Watch this. Not the book read by all men but your life read by all men. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. As we go into 1 Samuel chapter number 16, amen, again, I'm going to just reference it so that you know, but in 1 Samuel chapter number 16, we're skipping over a lot of information, and um, I don't know if you've ever heard me preach before, um, but I, I cover prophetically a lot of information when I'm preaching, so I got to just go to verse 16. Anyway, the Bible lets us know that God begins to speak to Samuel. Now, we understand that Samuel was a mighty prophet, and he was a seasoned prophet. Hallelujah. And the scripture declares that God begins to speak to Samuel, and he says to Samuel, how long are you going to mourn about Saul seeing that I have rejected him? How long are you going to mourn over Saul seeing that I have rejected him? Now, if I was preaching already and I'm mad, I'm just teaching right now, I would tell you to tell your neighbor to get over it. To get over it or to get over them. <laughs> How long are you going to mourn about Saul seeing that I have what? Now the problem in the body of Christ and the problem with people, amen, especially people that spend a lot of time praying and interceding, watch this, is that they are for who God is against. And then there are many people that are against who God is for. Before I start off tonight, let me just let you know, God is for this house. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. You're too quiet on that one right there. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God is for this house. Yes. He says, how long are you going to mourn over Saul seeing that I have rejected him? Now understand this. We understand, amen, that Saul was an individual. When you begin to understand Saul, you begin to understand, amen, that even though God anointed him to be king, in order to really to understand his reign, you have to understand the fact that God led the children of Israel, which is with what is called theocratic rule. In other words, they, they, they even though God begin to use the prophet Samuel, the reality is, is the people were following, watch this now, the unseen God. In other words, God 
was leading them different than any other nation in the earth. And the problem with the nation of Israel is they were not satisfied being different. Can I tell you, Revelation Church, you are different. Amen. Your prophet is different. Amen. His wife is different. Amen. The leaders of this house are different. You're different. Amen. I said you're different. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now understand this. One of the things that I've been taught, I come from some strange stuff in the body of Christ. I don't want to name denominations because I don't want anybody to get mad at me. Amen. But some of the denominations that, I come, that I've come from and I've sat under, they've mistaken uniformity for unity. For example, they'll say stuff like this. Nothing wrong with this. This Sunday, we're going to be united. I'll say, okay. They say we want everybody dressed in white. This Sunday, next Sunday, we're going to be united. We're going we're gonna to make you happy, Apostle. We know your favorite color is red. So we want everybody dressed in red. Just because... We share the same color. Just because we're uniform doesn't mean we're united. Amen. Amen. Folks, what God is after is he is after unity through diversity. I'm going to say that again. He's after unity through diversity. All right, now this is going to all make sense in a minute. When we take Saul for an example, the Bible lets us know that when we look at the translation of the name of Saul, his name means prayed for. Look at your neighbor and tell them, be careful what you pray for. Be careful what you pray for. His name means prayed for. But to make it a little better, his name means requested. And can I tell you, people of God, we are in the season where many people are in position because they were requested. This don't make too much sense yet. It's going to make sense in a minute. Hallelujah. Listen to me. Don't get intimidated by their outward appearance. Don't get intimidated by their height. Don't get intimidated by their prestige because some of them are warming up a spot. You're teaching. See, we are shifting from the season of the requested to the season of the chosen. And you have to understand when God chooses a person, he doesn't ask the requested for permission. Hallelujah. I got to behave because I feel fire already. Look at your neighbor, ask them, have you been requested or chosen? Have you been requested or chosen? I want to tell you tonight, your prophet was not requested. Amen. This church was not requested. Hallelujah. Get over here, man, here. Be seated. Saul's name means requested. How did Saul receive his position? Because the people wanted to be like every other nation. Are, are you listening? Israel was not satisfied with the way God was leading them. And because Israel was not satisfied, they requested a king like every other nation. So what did God do? He gave them 
what they requested. He gave them what they requested. Understand the story. I got to move past Saul because I don't really have time to deal with it. Amen. I wish I could preach, preach to you about Saul, about David, and about Solomon, but don't have time to deal with it right now. Amen. But understand this. We have to understand that when Saul was found by God, the Bible lets us know that Samuel found Saul. Watch this now. He was looking for a lost donkey. Was he not? Do you understand that when you begin to study Saul, you begin to understand that Saul represents the outer man called the flesh. Hallelujah. David, amen, which we're going to get to in a minute. David was not requested. He was chosen. Amen. But David stayed, even though he progressed, he stayed in the realm of warfare. Now you say, where are we going with this? Two days ago. Watch this. I'm a dreamer of dreams. And two days ago, your prophet walked to me in a dream. And when he walked to me, he said, Apostle, I'm in the second phase. And I said, I said, as soon as he said that to me, I began to understand what he was saying. Because the second phase is warfare. We're yeah. <laughs> teaching. Oh, my God. Watch this. But I'm here tonight to announce to you, you are about to enter the third phase. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, sit down. You're making me nervous. You're making me want to preach. I got to still talk. See, the third phase, and we're not going to talk about this tonight, is the Solomon season. See, you enter into a Solomon season because you follow the David. Did you hear what I said? See, if you stay in the Davidic season or that season of warfare, it becomes difficult to enter into the season where everything just flows. But I want to tell somebody tonight, the warfare is just about over and God's about to bring you into the... I receive. I receive. Be seated. God says to Samuel, remember again, a season, I keep saying this purposely, I'm not going to mess with it, a seasoned prophet. Season doesn't mean flawless. Season doesn't mean that you catch what God is saying all the time. Because Samuel was seasoned and Samuel was sent to Jesse's house. You know the story, don't you? And he was sent to Jesse's house to anoint, watch this, the next king over Israel. To be honest with you, even though he was the next king, he was God's first king. Because the other one was requested. This one was handpicked by God himself. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. When God handpicked somebody. I got too much preaching to do. Sit down. All of a sudden, the Bible lets us know that Samuel lets the people know that he's coming into the town peaceably, Bishop, and as he tells them he's coming into the town peaceably, he lets them know that I'm coming to offer up sacrifice. I'm coming to make a sacrifice. Amen. Because he was concerned about Saul. He wanted to make sure uh, that he would not have any issues dealing with Saul. Hallelujah. And all of a sudden he begins to declare that I'm come to make sacrifice. He calls for Jesse. He comes to Jesse's house. Now, please make sure you pay attention to this. And when he comes to Jesse's house, he tells Jesse, the next king over Israel is in your house. Jesse goes and he gathers together seven of his sons. Hallelujah. And when he gathers together seven of his sons, they wash, they bathe, they get dressed. If they're like me, they put on cologne. 
They smell good. They were pedicured, manicured. Watch this. And as they stood before Samuel, he looks at Eliab, who was the oldest. And when he looked at him, he said, he looks like a king. He has, the, he has a king's pedigree. Mm. Oh, we're going to have some fun tonight. Some of you don't match the pedigree. But God says, so what? Come on. Yeah. Oh, God have mercy. He had the pedigree of a king. On the outside, he looked like a king. Walked like a king. Had the stature of a king. Samuel said, surely this is the Lord's anointed. And we know the story. The Lord says, no, this is not the one that I'm choosing. Understand this. And this is a great mystery. And I, there are very few churches that I come to that get the mystery, what I'm about to say. This church gets it. Watch. Now, what's the mystery? He says, man looks on the outside, but God looks on the inside. God looks on the inside. So the problem with some churches is they just focus on the inside. You didn't hear what I just said. Man looks on the outside, but God looks on the you don't attract man with the inside. <laughs> Come on. You didn't hear what I just said. That's why, single lady, you still ain't married. Y'all don't hear me. That's why, Mr. Businessman and Businesswoman, your product is not going off the shelf. Because you got a good product, but it ain't packaged right. You're helping the people. Man looks on the outside. If you're going to attract a man, you need more than a heart. God looks on the heart. Amen. All of a sudden, we know the story. Samuel goes from person to person. All right. He hears, not this one, not this one, not this one, not this one, not this one. He gets all the way to seven. And when he gets all the way to seven, all of a sudden, Samuel says, is this all, all your sons? I know the voice of God. I know God sent me to your house. Oh, somebody's going to learn a great lesson. I know God sent me here. Are, are these all your sons? He says, well, you know what? Oh, yeah, I, I remember. I remember. I remember. I, I have another son. Wait, wait, you mean to tell me you have eight sons, but you only invited seven? Listen, those of you that know that God called you, never get frustrated when they don't invite you. Never get frustrated when they overlook you. Never get frustrated when they reject you. Now, I can give you all kinds of principles from being overlooked, rejected, but can I tell you this? This is, you are so powerful when God chooses you, God said, everything is stuck until you show up. Amen. The, the whole program is on hold. Can I tell you, that's why some cities have been stuck. That's why some nations have been stuck. Come on, that's why some churches have been stuck. That's why some businesses have been stuck. Why? Because they have, watch this, they have the requested, but they don't have the chosen. My goodness. Man, this is going to get good. We're just talking. Right? Amen. All of a sudden, David in 
enters the house. My late papa, Idahosa, Papa Idahosa. Let me share something with y'all. You know God is an amazing apostle? He would start me off with a Nigerian and then break me through in Kenya. Y'all didn't hear what I just said. Do you know your papa was about seven or eight when I was breaking through in Kenya with Reinhard Bunke and with Teresa Wairimu? What am I trying to say? Listen to me. Listen to me. You have chosen the wrong preacher to go against Africa. Y'all don't hear what I'm trying to tell you. Y'all didn't hear what I just said. I said y'all didn't hear what I just said. Can I tell you, people of God, it started off with us in this nation going to your nation as missionaries. But because we have lost fire and lost... Come on. Isn't God so amazing that he's taking people from another nation and bringing them into America and telling them, this is how you pray. This is how church. Yes, sir. I wish Revelation Church would yes, be more sir. excited Come about on. what I'm saying right here. Yes, sir. All right. Now, listen. Oh, man. David enters into the house. On the grand opening of this church. It's my night, baby, not yours. <laughs> Listen, on the grand opening of this church, the day before you guys opened, I'm a very observant individual. Prophet Lovey was walking in the hallway, and I was in the back, right behind him, and I was watching him. I said, there's something strange about him. He greets every person. He's saying hello. He's giving hugs. He's talking. He's engaging people. He's looking people in the face while he's talking. And I'm watching this man, watching this man, watching this man, and it shifted me to David. Why did it shift me to David? Because David was the only brother that did not wash. You didn't hear what I just said. Come on. David was the only brother let me say it slow. Okay, yeah, yeah. David was the only brother that didn't wash, that didn't, that didn't get dressed, that didn't prepare. Yeah. As soon as he walked in the room, yes. Samuel heard, yes. arise, yes. anoint him. This is he. Yes. Do you know why? I know the logical answer is he was chosen by God. That's true. But let me share with you why God anointed him. And if you understand why God anointed him, now you're going to understand as we go to the next dimension in this message because I want you to know the body of Christ, as you know it right now, is about to change. Yes, sir. Amen. Yes. Because we are stepping from out of the Saulish order into the Davidic order. We, we are about to shift from Saul-type leaders to David-type leaders. Amen. I don't think they understand me yet, son. Watch this. Why did David not wash? Because David smelled like sheep Some, somebody didn't catch what I just said you, you didn't hear what I just said do you know why this church is going to continue to grow Amen. and grow Yes. because your prophet rubbed shoulders with yes. sheep amen hallelujah and I understand it the anointing is attracted to shepherds that smell like sheep. As soon as David entered into the room, God said, 
Mm. There he goes. The leader that smells like sheep. You've never met the bishop with no churches? You've never met the pastor with no members? They have a title, but they don't have people because they're a tyrant. This man, last, when I was here last Thursday, do you know what time we left here? We left about 1.30, 1.45. I said, prophet, do you ever stop? He's just teaching and teaching and talking and teaching and sharing and teaching and talking. Oh, they want to meet? Yeah, let them, let them come on in. Oh, let them come on in. What I'm saying to you is when you find a man or a woman that smells like sheep, they attract the favor of God. They, oh, God have mercy. Amen. When you find a leader that smells like sheep. Amen. Oh, man. Am I telling the truth or am I just giving your prophet a compliment for the nothing? The truth. It's the truth. Saul did not really relate to the people. He had a mentality that he was over the people. As a matter of fact, I don't have time to touch this, but the first thing that David did when he became king is he sent a piece of flesh. He sent steak and wine to everybody's house. In other words, he was trying to let them know Israel now that you have the right leadership, it's time to eat. Amen. Oh, Jesus. Let me tell you this. If you understood the church you was in, you would volunteer as fast as possible. Amen. It Amen. See, the reason why you got to beg people to, to volunteer is they don't understand where they're at. Can I tell you, many of you that are members now, the church is about to become so big, you will become tomorrow's employees of Revelation. You're not listening to me right Jesus. now. Jesus. Hallelujah. I wish somebody that's believing Prophesy. God for a breakthrough yes. in their finances to make more noise than that. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. What am I talking about tonight? I'm talking about the kingly anointing. David experienced three anointings. Most believers don't understand, listen to me, that there are three anointings. Now, when I say three anointings, when you look at the life of Jesus at eight days old, what did he experience? Circumcision. At 12, going on 13, he experienced what the Jewish people call a bar mitzvah or apprenticeship. Do you understand that the second phase for Jesus is he became an apprentice to his father where he was taught the family business. This is how he became a carpenter because his father was a carpenter. He submitted himself to training. The problem today in the church is no one wants to be trained. And then the third phase is what we call sonship. Where, where the father, when Jesus was baptized, heaven opens, a voice comes down and says, this is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. Oh God, I wish I could talk to you about this. David experienced three such anointings. He experienced the priestly, the prophetic, but then he moved into the kingly. Now, why am I talking to you about the kingly anointing? If you don't understand the kingly anointing, you will, watch this now, you won't properly discern what you're going through. One person said to me, they were like out of breath. Oh, I said, Apostle, I can't take you no more. <laughs> they said, they said, I said, what's wrong? What's wrong? I said, Apostle, there's too many fights. 
It's too many battles. Apostle, I'm hearing too many things about you. Uh -oh. I'm hearing too many things about the church. Come on. I I'm hearing prophetic words. No, you're hearing suspicious words, not prophetic words. I'm, I'm hearing too many things. Apostle, I just, I can't take the up and down. I'll be back when, you, when it stops going up and down. What? See, understand this, folks. You have to understand that if you don't understand the kingly anointing, you will look at warfare and trials the wrong way. I don't think I'm going to get into it, but let me explain this to you quickly. When you understand the kingdom or kingly anointing, you begin to understand that the only way that kings increase their territory and increase their wealth is by going to war. You teach it good. Now, I'm not afraid to go to a battle when I know I'm going to win. Yes. You didn't Amen. hear what I just said. Yes. See, the problem with you is you are focused on the battle, but you're not focused on the spoils. Come on. Before David fought Goliath, what motivated him? He wanted to know what he was going to get once he won. Oh, yeah, yeah. He wanted to know what his family was going to receive. He wanted to know the rewards. Are you listening? See, many of you are trying to hold on and you're barely holding on because you are not focused. You are more focused on what you're going through instead of where God is taking you. My God. Revelation Church, the battle has intensified yeah. against your man of God yeah, yeah. and against your church because God said, I'm about to put my crown in Revelation yes. Church. Hallelujah. Yes. When I put... <laughs> Listen. You are about to be anointed to take cities. Yes. Amen. You, you don't hear me. I'm talking about entire cities. Yes. After a revelation night. You didn't hear me. Yes, sir. Why are all of these men of God coming against our man of God? Because God said, son, I don't want you preaching just at churches. Y'all don't hear me in here. See, if they don't come against you, you're going to preach at this church and preach at this. How many of you know your man of God is a friendly guy? You're going to preach here, preach here, preach here. God says, listen, the work is too vast. The work is too big. I don't got time for you to go here, here, here. I need you to go to a stadium here. Amen. Go to a st Amen. Clapping yes. loud enough. I, oh, God. I need you to go higher. I need somebody in the Revelation family to look at somebody else in the Revelation family and tell them we're about to go higher. We're about to go higher. We're about to go higher. We're about, about to, to go, go higher. higher. I need you to clap like you believe that you and Hallelujah. are about to go higher. Yes. Hallelujah. Be seated. We're getting there. David receives the anointing. Once he receives the anointing, isn't it amazing that once David is anointed, somebody else is stripped of the anointing? God never raises one up without putting one down. He took the anointing that was on Saul and he put the, was anointed. David was anointed, watch this now, with a horn. He was anointed what? With a horn. That came from an animal. When Saul was anointed, he was anointed with a vial. It was a man-made instrument. Did you hear what I said? Sir, you're anointed, but you're man-made. Woman, you're anointed, but you're man- You don't hear me in here. You're man-made. Man has made you. Your seminary has made you. Your degree has, I wish somebody would talk to me in here. Your degree has made you. Watch this. That's why 
Your focus is always doctrine. I'm a sound doctrine preacher, but that's not the only way that God speaks. Amen. Amen. How many of you know God speaks by revelation? Yes. Come on, Amen. Revelation Church, make noise. Yes. He speaks by revelation. He speaks by dreams. Yes. He speaks by vision. Yes. And sound doctrine. Amen. Can you imagine souls are going to hell and we're arguing about terms? Arguing. We're arguing about terms. We're arguing about words. Amen. See, the problem is, the reason why, amen, I love Africa so much, and I'm not telling you this, but people will tell you, amen, one of the things, don't I say it all the time, amen, when I'm praying, shakata bakata, rokota, and all of the Americans are looking at me. Yeah. What's wrong with you? Yeah. I tell them, listen to me, am I going to follow the people that got miracle signs and wonders? Am I going to follow the people that got some of the largest churches in the world? Or am I going to follow people that preach, close the book, and nothing happens? My God. I, I, just for like 10, 15 seconds, I need some Africans or people that got it in their blood. Yeah. Just blast in tongues for just like 10 seconds. Just like 10 seconds. Show these Americans how to pray. Show these Europeans. In Jesus' name. In Jesus name. Be seated. We're ascending. We're almost there. David gets the anointing upon his life. One of the most frustrating things that can ever happen in your life, evangelist, is to be anointed but alone. David was anointed, but for a little while he was alone. His brothers didn't like him. His father really didn't embrace him. He was alone. This is heavy. Until he comes into the house of Saul. Isn't God a wonder that in the same house where you are hated is in the same house where you're loved? to the house the Bible declares that Jonathan sees David and when Jonathan sees David the Bible says he loves him as his own soul oh my God I was studying this and I begin to say what kind of a man was Jonathan now I gotta go here because I gotta help some people because if I don't give you this point some of you are going to miss the tomorrow of Revelation Church help us Let me share something with you that's very, very important. God is a God of covenant. Amen. Did you hear what I just said? He's a covenant revealing, covenant making, covenant keeping God. Jonathan and David, I don't have time to really get into the whole depth of this. It's so amazing. But what they do is they, do, they cut a covenant between each other. They make what's called a covenant of kindness. I don't have time to break it all down to you. But as they come into covenant relationship, watch this now. The Bible lets us know that Jonathan began to protect David with his very own life against his father. Yes. What do you do when the person you love is hated by the people you come from. Man of God, I'm sorry, man. Man of God, I'm sorry, you know, but um, 
I love you, man, but I got to walk away from you. Why? Because my spiritual father don't like you. Man of God, I love you and whatever, but I can't keep the love for you. Why? Woman of God, I got to walk away. Why? Because somebody that I'm in under authority to, they don't like you. And so because of that, I've got to break our covenant. Now, here is the issue. Some of you are like Jonathan. You made a covenant with what God is about to do. But you were still connected to what God used to do. What's the danger in this? The enemy of the new is always the old. So good. Are you listening? Yes. What God did begins to come against what God is doing right now. Why? Because what God did now feels irrelevant. I hope you guys are listening. What God used to do, <laughs> what, who God used to use, let me make it more specific. Saul finds himself in a rage against David. Absolute rage. Why was he enraged against David? Because when he lost the anointing, an evil spirit from the Lord. You didn't hear that there. An evil spirit from who? The Lord. Was released towards him and began to trouble him. Isn't it interesting that God causes a problem and the problem the person has you have the answer to the problem you, you didn't hear what i just said an evil spirit from the lord begins to trouble him but david was skilled on the harp oh, yeah, 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 yeah. and they said Listen, this spirit of insanity and madness that comes upon Saul and troubles him. We know exactly what to do. Go get David and put David right next to him. I want to tell somebody on that side, your promotion is about to come. Hallelujah. I don't know if you're ready to explode yet. I want to tell somebody in the middle, God's about to promote you. I receive. Why? Because somebody's trouble is your anointing. Hallelujah. Oh, God, people in America need deliverance. I'm anointed for deliverance. Amen. People need healing. I'm anointed to heal. Are, are you listening to me? Oh, I got somebody that's ready. Listen to me. Either you were born to be a problem or to solve a problem. I want to tell somebody tonight, this church is filled with problem solvers. Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. This church is filled with solutions. Hallelujah. Stay right there. Be seated. Oh, man, we're climbing. All of a sudden, the Bible lets us know I'm just going to move right along real, real fast. Uh, Saul begins to attempt to assassinate David. I want you guys to pay very close attention. Saul begins to attempt to do what? Assassinate David. I'm not a gossiper and a talker, but let me tell you something I heard with my own ears from people I never imagined to hear it from. They told me with their own mouth, we will not stop until we destroy Revelation Church. We will not stop 
until the warlock does not preach another message. This is what I heard with my own ears. But what they did not know. Yeah. Come on. Yeah, yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Yeah. I said I what they did me. not know. Yeah. Hallelujah. Is that they were talking to a man that when he makes a covenant, nothing can cause him to break the covenant. Keep that camera right there. Let me talk to you that are in this camera right now. Come on. I want to talk to you in this camera right now. Listen to me. I'm not like you. I'm not like the average. When somebody is family with me, they're family. When somebody's my brother. Hallelujah. Come on, I was. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Do, do, do y'all know how many times Do y'all know how many times, how many times did Saul try to assassinate David? Let me give you the exact amount. He made 21 assassination attempts. 21 different times he tried to assassinate David. And all 21 times. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Revelation Church, I want you to know tonight that no weapon formed against right. you yes. shall be. Yes. This is what they forget. Watch this. God does math different than us. The Bible says ah, concerning the nation of Israel, it says the more they were afflicted, the more they multiply. Yes. Get ready. Yes. Every attempt is causing your church to go higher. Yeah. And Somebody said higher. And, and higher. Listen. God never said, and this is elementary, he never said, you will not see the weapon. But let me go higher. In verse 16, he says, behold, I am the one that created the smith that blows the coals in the fire. I'm the one that created the waster to destroy. It means if God lets you see the weapon, it can't destroy you. It can't bring you down. It can't bring you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Just for about 30 seconds, I want you to take a Paul moment. A Paul moment? Second Corinthians chapter 13. Paul talks about the thorn in the flesh. And when he begins to talk about the thorn in the flesh, watch this. Most people preach that Paul rejoiced in spite of what he was going through. But the revelation is deeper. What Paul actually
actually said is I've learned that when there's trouble, there's grace. <laughs> when there's affliction, there's grace. Watch this. So I'm not praising God in it. I'm praising God for it. Oh, you teach it good. Do, do, do you want to shift to another dimension? Yes. Every arrow the enemy sent in your way, all the trouble in your family, all the trouble in your life, all the trouble in the church, break out to a shout, give God praise. Hallelujah. 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 Come on, you ain't loud enough. You ain't loud enough. You ain't loud enough. Praise God for us. I'm not just praising God in it. I'm praising God for it. Every time I hear more gossip, I praise God for it. Every affliction, I praise God for it. The trouble, I praise God. See, the problem is the enemy thought that you were like regular Christians. That when they get afflicted, they get quiet. When they go through trouble, they lose their prayer life. When hell breaks loose, they lose their fire. But somebody need to tell the devil, this is Revelation Church. Yes. This ain't no regular church. Yes. This is Revelation Church. Hallelujah. We got revelation. We got victory. We yes. Come on, I thought this was Revelation Church, where people got fire. Oh, shot fire. I feel fire in here. I said, I feel fire in here. Ay, 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 ay. Saul makes 21 attempts, 21 attempts to assassinate David. Amen. When I look back over my life, some of you must know that song. <laughs> when I look back over my life and I begin to look at all the assassination attempts, can you imagine being in Brooklyn like me? First of all, being in Brooklyn is an assassination attempt. <laughs> There's some crazy folk there. <laughs> I'm telling the truth, son-in-law. We was in the car the other day. I had to tell my son-in-law, just ignore the guy. Didn't say nothing to him. Didn't, whatever. And he just yelled under his breath. You better go on if you know what's good for you. And I said, I'm like, sir, I'm not even, I'm in my car, he's in his car. He said, if you know what's good for you, you better, you better move on. I said, I forgot I'm in Brooklyn. People don't have it all. <laughs> Listen to me. <laughs> Every attempt that Saul made against David failed. I want you to repeat after me. Every attempt. Every attempt that the enemy sends. That the enemy sends to me. To me. My church. My church. My family. My family. My church family. My church family. And say this loud. My man and woman of God. My man and woman of God. Every attempt. Every attempt fails. Every attempt fails. 
us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Every attempt. Hallelujah. I said every attempt. Not one will succeed. Not one will prosper. Oh man. Now the Bible lets us know that David begins to move on and um, man, it's so interesting. You know, I used to beg family. I'd be trying to, would y'all please support my church? <laughs> you know how family is. Why would you go to the church around the corner and mine is around all the other corner? <laughs> Apostle, you know what I'm talking about. Would you, would you please support? Would you please come? Watch this. <laughs> they tell you to start and they don't come. But I remember it where I was from. I'm from an area where the suburbs and the ghetto are across the street from one another. You got to be from Brooklyn to understand what I'm talking about. No escape in the hood. <laughs> you over here living with the six-digit folks or the nine-digit, seven-digit folks. And right around the corner is the, is the grimy person. If you know what I mean by grimy. Somebody looking for it. All of a sudden, I tapped into the wisdom of God in street smarts. I said, I don't have to no longer beg my family to come to church. All I need to do is get more anointed. Start walking in more power. Start walking in more favor. Watch this. Because when Saul could not get David, he shifted his attention to his family. Oh, you so-and-so cousin. Yo, 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 yo. We got so-and-so cousin around the corner. Word? Load up. Load up. Get the ammo. Why? We can't get the one we want, but we're going to go after the cousin. David enters into a cave called the cave of Adullam. When he enters into a cave, all of a sudden a whole bunch of people in debt, discontented, in distress, they gather themselves to David. But here's the part of the text that shocked me. And it says his family also climbed into the cave. Why? Apostle Spivey, Saul could not get David. His family was wanted. Some of you, your family is about to follow you by choice. But some of you, your family is about to follow you because they don't have a choice. Hallelujah. You missed a good place right there to clap. If you don't want demons on your neck, come to my church. Come on here. If you want those, those nightmares to stop, you got to come to my church. I want to tell somebody, listen to me. Your whole family is about to fill up about three rows of this church. Hallelujah. I receive. I'm just about done. David gathers together his first congregation. What in the world am I going to do with people with no money? People that are not stressed. They're distressed. Distressed is a higher level than stress. It's stress upon stress. And then discontented. How in the world do you come to a church where nobody's happy? Nobody has money. And watch this. Nobody's excited about life. No hope. One of the reasons why you should give God praise for your prophet in your church is because, listen, I just known you guys for about four years, 
but some of you are higher than where I saw you last time. Yes. Y'all don't kid me. Some of you got more money than you had last time. Come yeah. on. Some of you got more. Ch Hallelujah. Come on. Let me bring you to the club. All the broke people keep quiet. If you got Jesus, joy, throw your hand up. Throw your hand. <laughs> Listen to me. Somebody that you connected to and you got healed, somebody that you connected to and your finances went up. Somebody that you connected to, you didn't have a place to live and a door open for you. Some y'all don't hear me in here. Listen to me. You should be the kind of person yes. that if somebody want to talk about your church, yes. and your yes, go there. Come on. You gotta be kidding me. You even listen to it? You even let them tell you your grievance? Their grievance? Stand up, son. You right there. I'm talking to you. Yeah, I catch stuff real fast. <laughs> Don't listen to another person say anything negative about the church. I don't know why I picked you. Amen. Don't listen to anyone say anything negative to you Amen. about your man of God. Hallelujah. Do you Hallelujah. know why? Why? Because I see a promotion coming to you. Amen. Hold on. Don't Hallelujah. Clap. Don't clap. Don't clap because I got to tell him something. Amen. But as fast as the promotion can come, mm -hmm. if you listen to other people, there will yes. be a demotion. Wow. Yes. Are you listening to me? I'm listening. I'm telling you today, son. Hear me. Amen. Yes. The next person that says anything derogatory or negative to you yes. about this church mm -hmm. or about your man of God, mm -hmm. correct them on the spot. Hallelujah. Yes. Yes. Are you hearing me? I'm listening. Yes. Tell them I'm in the Joshua generation. Hey! Hallelujah. And whoever speaks negative about my Joshua. Yes. Whoever speaks contrary about my Joshua. Yes. I got to kill their words. Amen. Yes, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Am I off or am I on? You're on. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Prophesy. I don't move like the prophet, but I do a little something. Prophesy. Pro prophet is dangerous. Something, something. Rough as sight. Now, I really can't go where I want to go, but I'm, let me just sum this up for you. Let me sum this up for you tonight. David went to the priestly. He was perfected in all three. Priestly, prophetic, and the kingly. Isn't it interesting that at 30, he became king over Judah? God, I wish I could talk to you about that. And he became king in Hebron. Places are important. Do you know Sarah was buried in Hebron? Do you know Abraham was called in Hebron? I wish I could talk to you about places. See, some of you are the right person, but you're in the wrong place. God told Abraham, go to the place that I will show you. Places are important. One of the reasons why so much warfare has kicked up is because the enemy is nervous about the history of this place. I'm talking the state of California. 
not going to go too far into it. Places are critical. David becomes king. Somebody's going to catch this. Let me just go for a second so I can make sure I see everybody. Amen. David becomes king over Judah for seven and a half years in Hebron. But then he shifts to a specific age. He shifts to 37. They still didn't catch me. He shifts to 37. And once he became 37 and a half, God said, I'm shifting you from phase two. You still didn't catch me yet. I'm shifting you from phase two into phase three. I'm releasing on you a kingly anointing. I'm going to make you king for my people Israel's sake. And when I make you king, I'm giving you an anointing. Watch this. To take dominion. Isn't somebody's birthday coming? Somebody's birthday is coming, right? I, I, I wonder how old that somebody is going to be. I said, I wonder how old that somebody is going to be. Hallelujah. Some of y'all still didn't catch it yet. the prophetic you're never leaving the prophetic but you are now about to shift into the kingly oh god have mercy i i, I don't know if you understand <laughs> what i'm saying within the kingly you build cities you take land you take dominion you take territory Within the kingly, you do what was never done before. David says, I'm king now. And because I'm king now, I'm coming with what I believe in. I was chosen by God because the last king would not do the will of God. God chose me because he knows that everything he wants me to do, I'm going to do everything Oh, Jesus. David said, here's the first thing we're going to do. From the budget of the nation of Israel, we're hiring 288 trained singers. 288 trained singers. And 4,000 musicians. Wait, David, are you crazy? We're increasing the staff by 4,288 and we got to pay 4,288 salaries? No, what you don't understand is everything that we are about to do under the kingly is connected to these 288. tell you this I don't know how God is going to do this and I don't think I don't think it's an accident that God has chosen a man with so much musicality on the inside of him yes I wish everybody would stand yes revelation nation get ready your worship is going all around the world. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Your Hallelujah. businesses are going all around the world. Hallelujah. He 
me today, you will not just be in movies. You will not just star in movies. But I see a production company yeah. coming from out. Yes, sir. Hallelujah. Yes, sir. Shede Blakataba. Watch this. Everyone in the kingdom of entertainment, quickly come up. I saw people stepping into the director's chair. Any person in the kingdom of entertainment, movies, production, quickly, 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 quickly come. There's an anointing coming on you. Just come close. If you do anything by way of production, TV, movie, amen, even music. Come quickly while the waters are stirred. You guys can begin to play. Many of you guys don't even know. I watched JT just to watch him run at the beginning of his production. I crack up every time I see him running and doing that thing. <laughs> there's, a, there's a unique grace. There's a unique anointing upon this church. Amen. And this is some of the purpose of the kick up of the warfare. Because the enemy can see the baby is in the birth position. One day I had this vision, and in it, Prophet Lovi was, how can I say this? The burden of what he was carrying was so heavy that he couldn't carry it alone. And in the vision, he looked at me like the way a woman looks when she's birthing something. This is what shifted my, this is why no one can say anything to me now. Am I correct about it, Gene? You heard me talk about it before. And in it, he said to me, I told him in Washington, D.C., when we saw each other, his eyes got watery. He said, Apostle, please help me. And I put my hand underneath his hands. And when I put my hand underneath his hands, I heard a voice say, he's carrying something massive. Yes. Are you listening to me? Now listen, I'm not a self-made person, but neither am I a kiss the behind person either. There's people that know me. I've never asked Prophet Lovey for one door. I've never asked him for nothing. Are you listening? Anything that God does, God does. Amen. I have no reason to say this. He didn't pay me to say this. He did, the things that I said today have purely come from God out of my heart. Amen. Amen. I woke up out of the, I came out of the vision. It was early in the morning. I tapped my wife. I said, sweetheart, from today, I looked at her. I said, I had a vision. I said, I will never say anything else negative at all about Prophet Lovi. She looked at me. I said, sweetheart, He's carrying something massive. Yes. He's carrying something massive. Yes. Hear me today. Shifting back to Jonathan. Do you know what Jonathan said to David? He stripped himself. Jonathan was the king's son. That means he was next in line to be king. What do you do? When the reality hits you that you're not next, David is next. Thank 
God, I'm not as old as some, and I'm not as young as some. I'm somewhere in between. But what do you do when you thought you was next? And God tells you, you are not next, but I want you to support the next. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Hear me today. I'm saying something very heavy to you, this whole church and those of you that are standing here. Did, did, did Jonathan make a covenant with David? He did, didn't he? What happened to Jonathan? He died with Saul. When Saul died, he died. Do you know why? When he made a covenant with David, he should have left with David. Do you know why Saul is mad? Uh, no, excuse me, not Saul, the apostles and bishops and prophets, evangelists, pastors, teachers. Some are mad because their Jonathans are leaving house. Are there any Jonathans at this altar? Woo. I said, are there any Jonathans at this altar? I don't think you're ready yet. Apostle, I'm going home soon. Please tell the people at this great church that they can't stay in allegiance to the old and the new at the same time. Amen. 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 You can't attach without detaching yourself. That's the first prayer that I want, that I'm going to pray for you now. I want to detach you from everything you've been connected to that's behind you. Are you hearing me? Some of you, what you've been connected to is still hindering you. What you've been connected to is still speaking against you. It's blocking you from crossing over. But I believe when you connect or when you attach, God is going to supernaturally detach you. Now, many of you worship God. There's a lot of young believers here. And I know about being a young believer because I was stupid as heck. I'm worshiping God. I don't need nobody. I don't need to be attached to anybody. I don't need to be connected to anybody. I know you're worshiping God, but I want to ask you, whose God are you worshiping? Yeah. I didn't say, who are you worshiping? Uh -huh. Worshiping. Yeah. Somebody got it. When Ruth attached to Naomi, mm -hmm. what did Ruth say? This is heavy now. Ruth said, from today, I beg you. Don't let me go back to my old church. Please don't let me go back. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Don't let me go back to my old family. Please don't let me go back. Yeah. From today, where you go, I will go. Your God shall be my God. But here's where it gets deep. Your people should become my people. Watch this. I'm detaching myself from how I was raised. I'm detaching myself 
from my culture. I can't detach from culture without detaching from language. Folks, I'm going heavy. You're not with me. Not only am I detaching from language, if your people are my people, yes. I will eat what you eat. I will wear what you wear. Yes, sir. I will sir. talk how you talk. Yes, sir. Hallelujah. You guys are part of a cult. Anybody heard that? What are you doing bowing to man? Why are you bowing to man? Well, let me take you to Nigeria where they lay prostrate. Let you be a grandmother. Let you be a grandfather. Any Nigerians in the house? Am I telling the truth? They're not worshiping their parent in the sense of worshiping God. They have a biblical culture of honor. Amen. Amen. So listen, I'm not bragging, but I'm going to share with you. I'm hardly ever down. I'm being honest with you. You can ask somebody, I'm hard. I'm, like they ask me, okay, Gene is here. Have you seen me down that much, Gene? All right. Have you seen me? Most of the time when you see me praying, I'm praying hard. I'm praying with consistent. Intense. Amen. With faith. Yes. So how do I explain people around me with no faith? How do I explain people around me with no fire? With no power? They're around me, but they're not attached. Facts. When you become attached... If I got faith, you're supposed to have faith. Yes. Yes. Amen. Let me use you with a nice hat. Either one of y'all. No, stay there. Stay there. Stay there. If I poured oil on this man, if I poured oil on this man, where would the oil go? If you know the Bible. It's flowing down to the beard. Why? Because the beard is attached to the head. If something comes on your head and you don't get it, it's because you're not attached. Yes. So good. So good. Hallelujah. All right. It's time for declarations. Your head is blessed. Yes. You're blessed. Amen. Hallelujah. Your head is anointed. Yes. You're anointed. Yes. Hallelujah. Your head is prosperous. Yes. You're prosperous. Yes. Your head is up. So you're up. Amen. Yeah. Your head dresses well. So you should dress well. I Hallelujah. Receive. Your head drives well. So you are about to drive. I receive. I wish somebody would give God a shout. I I want you to begin to pray right now, like Prophet Lomi was here. So pray, like your prophet Pray, 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 pray. Pray, pray, pray. Pray, pray, Come on, 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 come on,
I don't know why, but I keep seeing this great call of God upon your life. Prophesy. Every time I look at you, I keep seeing this great call of God upon your life. I want you to just for a second, close your eyes. Lift your hands up. Lift your hands up. Fire comes upon you now. Fire comes upon you now. Fire comes upon you now. It's on you. 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 Everybody, lift your hands at the altar right now. Lift your hands at the altar. Nemondeba, shkete bro. Shere brandeba. Sokoto brondeba. Nenemokote bandereba. Shere brando. Lekete bronde bandaba. Shere brokoto bo. Father, I thank you right now. You are causing the missing pieces to come together. You're bringing the links. You're bringing the links right now. Someone you put the script in them. Somebody else you put the music in them. Somebody else you've put the acting ability in them. Amen. From some people, amen, I even see notes coming out of you because of the musicality. Notes coming out of you. Stop trying to do it all by yourself. Stop trying to do it all by yourself. Father, in the name of Jesus, I say now, blow, blow a fresh wind, a fresh wind, a fresh wind, a fresh wind. Receive it now. Receive it now. Receive it now. Receive it now. Shere brande ba. Lekete bonde ba. Lemon de bande. Lemon de ba. Shere. Father, stir. Go play. Begin to play. You can play louder. Receive. 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 saw when I saw you you're very resourceful yes sir you're very resourceful yes sir amen do you know yes, Deuteronomy 818 what does it say it says the Lord says I've given your hands the power to get the power to get yes sir. let me go deeper Please. the power to create oh yes yes the power to create yes yes 
about a month ago, yes. I woke up one morning mm -hmm. and I heard the Lord kept saying to me over and over. He said, I've anointed your words. Mm -hmm. I kept hearing this phrase over and over and over. Yes, I've anointed your words. I've anointed your words. I've an I said, Lord, what are you saying? He said, I've put creative ability in your words. Oh, yeah. praise Jesus. Yes. From today, ba -da -ba -ba -ba. when I lay hands on you, yes, sir. creative ability is coming out of you. Oh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Hallelujah. Listen, you will not wait. You will create. Are you listening? Yes, You're not going to wait. You're going to create. Receive it now. Receive. 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 Oh, bye bye. Shit. Receive. 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 How? How? Receive. to stir something in you I need to stir something in you Hallelujah. this I'm going to stir it in you you know what I heard when I touched you the moment I told, touched you I heard the word great mm. prophesy God said to tell you that you're carrying greatness Amen. I don't know if you really believe that oh, I believe. you believe that yeah. lift your hands Lift your hands. Close your eyes. Receive. 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 Come on, everyone. Lift your hands up. Lift your hands up. Lift your hands up. If I've already touched you, you can go back to your seat. If I haven't touched you, stay up. Some of you like the Asians, you're coming back for seven times. Because <laughs> nobody moved. <laughs> Receive. Who my shot? Receive. Receive, young lady. Receive. 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 All self-doubt goes from you. Amen. Any self-doubt. Any self-doubt. Amen. Father, the same gift of faith that you put inside of me, let him receive it now. Let him receive it now. Receive. 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 having financial problems okay I want to tell you this the reason I asked you because I heard the Lord tell me to tell you your broke days are over Amen. hallelujah that's what I heard when I put my hands on you those days are gone Who else? receive who else receive receive Receive. 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 There's an anointing on you to run through troops. How? And to leap over walls. No more down days. You're going up from here. You're going up from here. You're going up.
today. Yes, sir. I remember this. June 1st, mm. you go from limited opportunities mm. to two million. Thank you, Father. Amen. Amen. I receive it. I receive it. You go from limited, because yes, I see limitations and limited opportunities. But you go from limited opportunities to Thank opportunities you, everywhere. Thank you, Father. Thank you. Receive. Receive. Amen. Huh? Oh. Prophesy. I said you've come from a long way. Canada. That physical, that physical, you come from Canada. Canada. Yeah, prophesy. Prophesy. Uh, uh, wow. When I put my hand on you, I heard he's come from a long way. I didn't know it was in terms of distance. Amen. I was, as soon as I heard it, I said, oh, he's come from a long way. But you've actually come from a long way. May you receive everything you came for. Receive. May you receive everything you came for. Share it long, Watch this. Watch this. And because of coming tonight, listen to me. Listen, you will not be disappointed. Hallelujah. Are you listening? Hallelujah. You will not be disappointed. Receive. 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 Amen. I want you to receive because you're such a nice young lady. Amen. Receive. Receive. Who you here with? My sister. Your sister. Where's your sister? Madison. Tell your sister to come up. Receive. 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 Y'all so hungry, man. Now I see why your service is so long. Receive. 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 What do you want to be when you grow up? Huh? Um, I want to make movies for children's, um, Christian movies for children. Hmm. How old are you? 16. 16? Yeah. Where's Double Grace? Grace, do me a favor. Because when I, she said movies, but when I laid hands on her, I also felt ministry. But, but you carry, you carry a dual grace. You know, it's many different things. Release into her. Amen. Amen. Receive. Yeah. Who's this? Oh, my daughter. Your daughter, what's wrong? For her, she's the one that loves us. She's the one that? She's after us. She's an actor. Yes. Amen. What's her name? Prophetess, Al <laughs> Prophetess Alishani. Say the name one more time. Prophetess Alishani. And you calling her prophetess already. I love yes. Ah, yes. uh, ah. Uh, what's the name? Alishani. Alisha. Yes. Alishani. 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 Yes. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. May every dream. Yes. May every desire. Yes. Not only do I speak that every dream yes. and every desire comes to pass. Yes. Mama, let me tell you this about your daughter as well. Yes. You will never have to worry. Because yes. I feel this. Yes. You will never have to worry yes. about things happening to her that happen to other children. Yes. Because of your connection to the prophet of God. Divine protection, divine safety, and breakthrough is your portion. Receive. 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 I don't know why to tell you this. You have to be very specific with what you want. 
I don't know why, but when I laid hands on you, it's like I felt the, like a, you're like such a cool person, such an easygoing person. Am I telling the truth? Yes. It's like you're so easygoing that, you know, if it goes this way, it goes this way. If it goes this way, it goes this way. But the Lord says to tell you that you need to be very specific and very firm okay. with what it is that you want. Yes, sir. You hear me? Amen. Receive. Amen. Receive. Receive. Hallelujah. Receive. Mm, mm, mm. Receive. Receive. Where are those sisters? Sisters or friends? Sisters. Receive. 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 Hold hands. Receive. I was saying if Apostle was still standing up there. Receive. I see him, I see him. Receive. Receive. Mm. Receive. Ho! Receive. Receive. Now listen, some of you that I'm just laying hands on and not saying anything, there are things inside of you Amen. being stirred. Amen. Amen. Can I pray for you? You got my brother's shirt on. Yes. That's, that's my big brother. Your family. Yes. Thank you. Receive. 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 Mm. Your lonely days, mm. your sad days, your days of disappointment are over. Hallelujah. Are you listening? I said, are you listening? Hmm? You understand me? I said, are you yes. here? Okay. Yes. Where are you from? Michigan. Michigan? Oh, okay. Listen, again, your lonely days, your days of disappointment are over. Listen, these are the days where you are going to hit the bulls, like the arrow, it's going to hit the bullseye. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. See? Lift your hands up. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. Father, I pray right now. Amen. Who's ladies here that pray for people? Who's ladies here that pray for people? Amen. Who? I see destiny. I don't want to put you to work evangelist, but come. I'm about to pray for her, but I, it's like I feel that she needs some freedom. Amen. And I want to hit her in the stomach, but I want you to do that yourself. Amen. Listen, there's an assignment of the enemy to set back your progress. That's what I'm saying, to set back your progress. But from now, it's going to lift immediately off of you. Amen. 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 Lift your hands up. Go evangelist. Receive. Receive. What's wrong? Arthritis. Arthritis. And diabetes. And, and diabetes. <laughs> yes. Anemia. Everything. I like your situation. <laughs> My kids too. Hmm? My kids. I have four. You have four kids. All of them out. Mm -hmm. Do you know why away I said of, I, away from God? Do you know why I said I like your situation? Mm -hmm. Do you know why I said I like your situation? Because mm -hmm. what you're dealing with, I dealt with it. Mm -hmm. Amen. Come on. My wife will tell you I will wake up every morning going like this. I can't. Just listen to me. Move. Don't tell me what you can't do. I will wake up going like this because my hand, I wouldn't be able to close it in the morning time. Mm -hmm. Are you listening? So every morning now I wake up, there's no problem. Listen. Then before I start making changes, I would feel pain in different parts. I know. That's why I'm telling you. I can't move. Are you, stairs. are you ready to be healed? You can't what? I can't, I can't make up stairs. Are you ready to be healed? Mm. 
I said, are you ready to be here? Yes, I am. I'm ready. Lift your hands up. Amen. Both hands. Close your eyes. I'm going to lay hands on you. Just keep your eyes closed. I'm going to lay hands on you, and you're going to be instantly healed. Hallelujah. Are, are you ready? Are you ready? Keep your eyes closed. You're going to be instantly healed. Are you ready? Come here. Come here. You. Be healed now. Be healed now. Tell me what you feel. Be, be, be healed. Be healed. She feel numb. Be healed. Be healed. Now, move your legs up. Hallelujah. Move your legs up. Thank you, Move your legs up. Thank you, huh? I, I, I can't walk God, but I can't go upstairs. You can't go upstairs. Mm -hmm. Hey, walk upstairs with him. Hallelujah. 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 Hey. Hallelujah. You can celebrate Jesus. I you thought you said you can't walk upstairs. Jesus. Okay, lift your hands up again. You ready? I'm going to touch you. Close your eyes. Be healed now. Be healed now. Lady, you have no choice. You're in a house of miracles. You're in a house of miracles. I see. Ho, ho. Be healed now. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Now lift your legs up. Lift your legs up. Lift. Lift. Keep doing it. Keep doing it. Keep doing it. So you keep feeling numbness. Were you feeling numbness before? It's always numb. It's always numb. Where at? There? 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 Be healed now. There. Oh, I know who I got for you. Come here, sweetheart. Come here, sweetheart. just about done I just want you to do me one favor before I hand it over to Apostle Garcia I want everybody just to stand just for a moment and just for two moments two minutes I want you to pray for your prophet And his wife. Lift your voice and pray right now. Just about that. Just 
right next to each other. Perfect. Perfect. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. Please remain standing. It's just going to take a moment. Obviously, sweetheart, I know she don't know what I'm doing. But I want to use this for an example. I need about 10, the closest 10 guys. or t It doesn't have to be men, but just like 10. Just come up quickly. People that know that they're leaders in the house, that stand with their prophet. Thank you, Apostle Gershon, for coming up. Amen. Thank you, the women. Even if more than you come up, 15, 20 at the most. Now, I want everybody looking at this example. This is very, very important. This is very, very important. If you remember this, if you remember this example that I'm about to give you, every level that this church and the prophet and the prophet is gone, you will be a part of it. Amen. 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 If you forget this example, Amen. You might get yourself in trouble. All right. Just for example's sake, I'll play Prophet Lovi. She'll play Prophet Maggie. The leaders that are on this stage. If you knew that attacks were coming towards Prophet Lovi. Mm -hmm and you knew that attacks were coming towards Prophetess Maggie. I want you to show the congregation how you would cover the prophet and the prophetess. Hallelujah. 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 All right, now stop. Stay where you are. Everyone is wrong except for him and him. Okay, just for example's sake, I'll show you again. Slide over because I want the people to watch. Okay, if I'm Prophet Lovi and this is Prophetess Maggie, and my leaders are covering me, watching me, if I give my wife a kiss, will they see me? They will. If I take my jacket off, will they see me? If I go like this, will they see me? Never forget what I'm about to say to you. Churches are destroyed because they become too familiar with the leaders. Amen. Amen. Moves are destroyed because the people see what they were never called to see. Amen. I'm speaking about 30 something years of experience. So the proper way to cover a man or woman of God, if I'm standing this way looking at my leaders, I can't see what's coming against them. Amen. Can I see this way? So the proper way to cover, show them now the proper way to cover your leaders. Everyone with their back turned, holding hands because we want to make sure that no one gets through. Can any of them see what I'm doing with my wife? No. Can any of them see now? In other words, they're blocking me. Watch this. They're blocking whatever is trying to come towards me. But they're not becoming so familiar with me that I can't do things with my wife and talk to my wife and kiss my wife and whatever. Are you listening to what I'm saying to you? There comes a day that Moses walks with the people. But then there comes a day that Moses must go ahead of the people. In other words, listen to me. Revelation Church, this is a great church, but you are only at the beginning. If the beginning is this great, I don't think you understand what I'm saying to you. Amen. 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 If you cover your leaders properly, Nothing will reach the prophet 
Amen. Nothing Amen. will reach the prophetess. Amen. Amen. Are you listening? Yes. Amen. Amen. Never forget the example. Give God praise for this church. For Hallelujah. Your Hallelujah. Thank you. Hallelujah. Somebody give the Lord a shout in the house. Come on, somebody give the Lord a shout in the house. Hallelujah. 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 Glory to God. Apostle, thank you, thank you so much. We love you. Hallelujah. We love you. We love you. Glory to God. Oh, how many are excited for what God is doing in the house. Hallelujah. Praise God, praise God, praise God. Hallelujah. This is an opportunity that you also have to sow your seed, to come before the altar, to present your sacrifice. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And we're going to do it joyfully. Hallelujah. Lift it up before the Lord. Let's pray. Let's pray and then get ready to come. Father, we give you praise. We thank you that it is you that blesses. It is you that gives us the seed to sow. We thank you, Lord, for the many, many blessings. We thank you. We give you praise. We exalt your name for your protection over our family, over our businesses, over everything that we do, Lord, for our going out and our coming in. We thank you. We thank you. We come with this seed, with this uh, 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 seed just to show our appreciation in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Now look to the directions of the ushers as you give. God bless you. Amen. Hallelujah.
richly bless you. The Lord increase you. The Lord cause his face to shine upon you. Go from this place knowing that you are blessed. Hallelujah. God richly bless you. Thank you for coming. Thank you for joining us. Remember to invite friends and family. Sunday is going to be amazing. Hallelujah. God richly bless you. We love you. To every woman, there is a time. There is a purpose. There is a divine mandate of the Father to see the impossible with man become possible with God. Daughters, it is your time. To you, freedom has come. To you, healing has come. To you, deliverance has come. That through you, freedom may come. Through you, healing may come. And through you, deliverance may come. So daughters, arise, shine. Your light has come and the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. We are daughters.